Hello, welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 lecture. Uh, this is the Stock Index Construction Lecture. Now, as uh, promised in the last lecture, what we're pretty much going to talk about in today's uh, lecture is we're going to talk about how to construct a price weighted index and also how to construct a, a market capitalization market capitalization weighted index now as uh, you know, it took me long enough to say that. Usually this is just called market cap. But what it means is if it's a very, very big company, it's got a high amount of capital involved. So it will be very, very strongly weighted in the index. If it's a very small company, it'll have a very small amount of capital in the company. So it will have uh, a very small weighting in the index. Whereas price weighted indexes are just, you know, it's just purely on the price of the stock. Now, before we finish today, and after we've uh, done these two things, we'll also cover a couple of other bits and pieces. Uh, we'll also cover, let me just grab hold of this and move it up the screen a bit. We shall also cover um, the difference between a price return index and a total return index. And we'll also cover, um, just very briefly, because it's going to be in the next lecture too, we'll also cover a thing called the free float, which essentially is, um, when we construct an index, we'll base it on the amount of um, capital that can be invested in in the company. I'll explain that later and again in the next lecture. Um, we'll also, as well, just very, very briefly mention net price return indexes and what that term means so we'll very very briefly discuss that too okay let's get straight then into a price weighted index let's bring the my excel version up so uh, here comes excel it's speed of light okay we're going to uh, take a look at this excel file here and what we're going to do is we're going to set up some input factors first of all we're going to set up three companies the first company is called a baby company. There we are, or baby comp. We'll set up uh, another company called a mummy company. And a final company called daddy company, just like the three bears. So we're going to have a, a little company, a medium, a, a, a medium sized company and a giant company. And we're going to fill in some information about these three companies. The first thing is when we construct a, an index, we generally have a day one on which we construct the index, at which we try to set the index to 1,000. Very rarely we set it to 100, but usually 99.99% of the time. We'll try and set the index on day one to 1,000, and then we can see whether we're going up or down from there as we go through time. So I'm going to put the first share price in. For these three companies on day one of their of the existence of the of the index so we're going to say twenty dollars for the baby company ten dollars for mummy company five dollars for daddy company on day one we'll say how many shares each company has so let's put num shares in here and for the uh, baby company we'll just say one share for the mummy company the medium-sized company we'll say 10 shares and for the daddy company, the big company, we'll say 100 shares. You can see there's 100 times more shares in daddy company than baby company. Although baby company's actual share price is four times bigger. So daddy company is actually 25 times bigger in market capitalization terms than baby company. Now we're going to increase the share price on day two. I'm going to use a very, very simple algorithm here. I'm just going to multiply the share price on day two. You'll see what this means later, but I'll just put a, a multiplication factor in here. For the baby company on day two, I'm going to double the price. For the mummy company, I'm going to keep the price the same. And for the daddy company, I'm going to halve the price. And that will make more sense later on. Let's also as well say that the index that we require on day one, um, oops, required with a little e, is it going to be equal to a thousand. So we want the index on day one to be a thousand. Now these 10 fields are all input fields. I'm going to color them all yellow. So let's just do that. Let's get to home and make them all yellow. I'll make this one yellow too. So home yellow. 
super. I can make this a very narrow column because I just wanted to make it slightly different but not totally separated. We can narrow some of these columns down as well just so that we don't uh, waste too much space. And the multiplication factor column goes like that. Super, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's build up then a price weighted index using that information that we've got there. So we're going to start on day one with the baby company. So that's going to be equal to that. And then that should copy down, shouldn't it, to get the other two. So I'll just paste those two things in there. Super. Now let's uh, let's put the first share price in. So the share price on day one, well, that's going to be equal to what we set in the yellow area, equal to this. And again, that should just copy straight down. I'll use a special trick of double clicking on the square box there. There we are. You can see that's 20, 10, 5. Same as it was in there, 20, 10 and 5. That's lovely. Now we're just going to multiply the share price for the second day by this factor here. So share price on day two or SP on day two is just going to be equal to that multiplied by the multiplication factor. And again, that should copy down, use the square the blob trick, go into the square blob, double click, and it copies it down. Notice 10 multiplied by one is 10, and five multiplied by half is two and a half. Lovely. Now what we're going to do, shade these in in a, in a different color. Now not yellow, because that's an input color, but we'll go, for, we'll go for green. Just total up these columns. So what's the total price of all the shares on day one. So it's just going to be a nice simple sum. So go for sum there. So 20 plus 10 plus 5 is 35. And what's the price of the shares on day two total? 40, 10, 2.5. Again, just copy that out. Well, we'll just put the sigma sum in there. Super. 52.5. Hopefully that's all making sense so far. Now, day one is very special. Because on day one, we want to set up the index to be equal to 1,000. How we do that is we set up a thing called um, the price weight divisor. So the price of the weighted divisor, I'll make that right um, justified so we can just move it across there. It's going to be essentially, it's equal to this total, this total here divided by whatever we want the index to be on day one, so divided by a thousand. So 35 divided by a thousand is 0 0.035. That's what the divisor is. Now that is fixed forever, for all time, as long as we are running this index. So on day two it'll be 0 0.035, on day three it'll be 0 0.035. Now we, if there are corporate actions where we create more shares, or we swap companies in and out of the index, we will adjust this um, in, in a kind of uh, pro rata manner. But essentially, if these three companies stay here forever and never change the number of shares, this will be 0 0.035 forever. So what's the index on day one? Well, we know it's going to be a thousand because we set it up to be that way, but let's just, uh, let's just calculate it then. So that's uh, going to be equal to um, the total here divided by the divisor, and it comes out to be thousand. Let's just bring that up again so we can see the whole thing. I'll colour that in a uh, different colour as well so we'll, we'll maybe try orange for this one. It's a nice lovely orange colour there. Oop, didn't quite get it. There we go. Super. So hopefully we've followed that so far. On day one the three share prices added up to 35. We then you know manipulated a, a divisor to make this index equal to a thousand. Now let's see what the index is going to be on day Two. Now we just multiplied that price by two, kept that price the same, and halved that price. We ended up with a total of all the share prices added together of 52.5. Let's see what that's equal to divided by the divisor. So this is equal to that divided by the divisor 1500. So the index has gone up 50%. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Half of 35 would be 17 and a half. Add that on to 52.5. Super. So the index is now is equal to 1500. Super trooper. Now, that is a price weighted index. You can see baby companies 
doubling of price there, even though it's only got one share, has had a huge impact on the on the index. It's gone from 1,000 to 1,500, which is which is a huge effect. Now, Daddy Company going from five to 2.5, it has 100 shares. It should have a big effect on this if it was market cap weighted, but it's price weighted, so it's uh, it's not counteracted the effect of Baby Company doubling in price. Now, a market cap weighted um, index will take into account the fact that Daddy Company has a hundred big daddy daddy bear shape shares in it so let's create a market weighted index so we'll do the same thing again we'll start with baby company so we'll start the share price on day one so the share price on day one for baby company again this is the market cap weighted version of this so we'll just put that in here market cap weighted index uh, these three share prices for baby company, mummy company, and daddy, daddy company are going to be the same as these three share prices. So let's just do that now, equal to that, and just drag that down. There we are. So 20, 10, and 5. Again, we can colour these in if we like. Let's go to home, colour those in. There we go. Now, we're not going to total those three prices. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply those three prices by the number of shares in the company to get the market cap. Now we're assuming here that the free float, which I'm going to discuss later, is 100%. So we're going to do the market cap on day one, the market capitalization, and that's equal to the share price multiplied by the number of shares. So that's 20 because there's only one share in the company. Drag that down. And you can see here those 100 shares at 5 is giving a market cap of 500. Let's colour that in, in a different colour, just to make sure we're clear on the difference. So I'll go for a nice pink there. It's like the uh, Giro d'Italia by Grace. Now, we take a total of this. In this case, we take a total of that. So copy this across, the sum of. And that's 620. Now we create our market weighted cap divisor. Market cap weighted divisor. Again, right justify that so it moves across. There we go. And this time it's going to be equal to the total there, which is much higher because of those share multiplications divided by the thousand. So the divisor has gone up to 0 0.62 from 0 0.035. And we might just, just comment that field there. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, look in our Excel library videos. And there should be a video in there which tells you how to comment cells in the way I've just done it myself there. So again, comment this one. Just so we can see exactly what's going on. Again, I'll make this blue to make pretty clear what's going on here. Use my painter trick to uh, paint that in the right format. Now we're going to move on then to day two. So the share price for day two should be, you know, it's just these three share prices again. So let's uh, get those across and bring those down. And there you can see that we've got 40, 10, 2.5. That's nice. You can make those green. I'm going for my painter trick again. So there's my painter. Double click it this time. That's correct. And then turn painter off. Lovely. Now let's look at the market cap waiting for day two. Market cap on day two. So that's going to be the share price multiplied by the number of shares again. That's going to be equal to that, multiplied by the number of shares. And copy that down. And you can see 2.5 is the price, multiplied by 100 shares, giving us a market cap of 250. Again, use my uh, special pet, or just, let's just colour them in pink. Let's not mess around with painter too much. There we go. Take a total of that. And... We'll do a sum of, let's do it directly so we can see exactly what's going on. 
So this is now 390. Now, oh, let's, I missed something out here. Let's put the index in here. Now it should, we know it's going to be a thousand, but let's just do it anyway. That's going to be equal to the total divided by the divisor. That should come to a thousand, super. Let's make that orange. Make sure all the colors line up. Now, what's it going to be here? So this is going to be equal to 390 divided by that divisor. And you can see the index has dropped down massively there. So the market cap weighting has been heavily, has heavily skewed the index towards the price drop of um, daddy company going from five dollars to two and a half dollars but because there were so many shares in here it's really dragged the index down even though baby company went from twenty dollars up to forty dollars but there was only one share so there's only going from a market cap of twenty dollars to forty dollars that was massively outweighed by daddy company going down from five hundred dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars really dragging the index down so these are the same figures for the same three companies, but with a price weighting, we've gone from 1,000 to 1,500 for the index. And with market cap weighting, we've gone from 1,000 to 629 um, using a market cap weighted index. So you might want to play around with this if, if you've built this up. You know, you can put this up to three. We can see there's been a huge change there in that index and not much of a change here this index um, you could increase the number of baby company shares make it 50 and then this should make a big difference okay so we, you know we're seeing a huge no notice no change in the price weighted one because the number of shares didn't matter but now we've reversed direction with this one and we've uh, we've more than doubled the index even though daddy company halved in price Anyhow, that's how uh, price weighted and market cap weighted indexes are constructed. Um, that's the difference between them. In the price weighted ones, the divisor is taken from a total of the stock prices. In the market cap weighted ones, the divisor is taken from the market the price times the number of shares. I didn't promise that I'd talk about price return. Um, price return index. A price return index is purely to do with the share price. We don't take anything else into account. With a total return index, with a total return index, we what we do is with a share, the share will be generating dividends. So the share will be generating dividends. What we do with the total return index is we assume that those dividends that the shares have produced get piled back into the company. So we uh, so you know we'll increase our investment in the company by the amount um, that the dividend is. So instead of the dividends just coming out and just disappearing, with a total return index, any dividends which come out of the company, and we, we typically use the share prices on what's called the ex-dividend date, which I'll explain in a later lecture. We, when the dividends come out of the company, we assume that we've reinvested them into buying more shares in that particular company and reinvested into the index. So that will generally be um, greater than or equal to a price return index. A free float. Now, a free float is going to essentially be the investable market capitalization. So I'll explain that in more depth in the next lecture. But imagine this um, with a company. A large company, there might be a billion shares, but family owning the company might have kept back a hundred million of those shares back for themselves and they never ever sell them and they've told everybody they're never ever going to sell them. Well then, the market, the free float would only be 90% of the company because there's only 900 million shares available to buy and sell. The other 100 million are locked up inside the family who created the company. So that's a free float. Now, one last thing I did say I'd mention, that's the net price return. The net price return is, depending on your local taxes, uh, this will be the effect of taxes on the index. So that would be a net price return. It would be the effect of local taxes um, on your returns if you've invested in an index but I won't go into too many details there because everyone's taxes in every part of the world 
are completely different from uh, from everybody else's. Anyhow, that's how we construct indexes. I'll see you next time.